Ashley. Great job on the film. Thank I loved you. it. Anything dolphin related is totally amazing. Being that it's a sequel to Dolphin Tale and you've worked with the cast before, is there anything you learned about Winter or other cast members that kind of surprised you the second time around? Harry Connick Jr. has done at least 30 minutes of cardio exercise uh, without a single day's break for, I don't know, 14 years or something remarkable. Wow. So that was new information. Cool. Um, Morgan can fall asleep sitting up straight in a tall chair on set with lots of activity around him. I can <laughs> photobomb him and even that won't wake him up. Oh, wow. And dolphins, like human beings, absolutely must be in community to survive. Yes, that was the best answer I've gotten all day. It's they a tough beefed one. up. That yeah, was that was my he? biggest thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I was looking at him on screen, uh -huh. and you know he's big, broad-shouldered, and I was I was very proud of young Nathan Good. for uh, you know coming into young manhood. Uh, so <laughs> I would say that would be my. Right I think for our eyes, Cozy's uh, Cozy's songwriting. I mean, I knew she was a phenomenal singer. I just I didn't know she was also a songwriter. And so for her writing the the credits song oh, for I this, no, was, I, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, she sings Great. this, she wrote and is singing the song that that plays during the credits of the film. That is awesome. Yeah. I learned a lot of new things about my castmates, especially Cozy and Nathan who play uh, Hazel and Sawyer. Uh, you know, they, they're growing up and, and they're they're really becoming these, these incredibly full characters in real life. I mean, they're great people and I loved like learning all about the stuff that they've been working on and as far as like um, learning about winter, it's not a, so much about what did I learn as much as how much I loved being around her and kind of experiencing the time with her, which is really exciting. I learned something, but I wasn't surprised about the knowledge. What was it? The depth of grief mm -hmm. that they seem to uh, events. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, things like elephants grieve over the loss. Mm -hmm. So it isn't surprising to know, but it's something to learn. So Morgan had a really sweet scene with Sawyer in the movie, and um, he like gives him the clock without giving things away, gives him some advice. What's the best advice you guys have ever gotten to kind of pursue your dreams or go further with something? I had been in Hollywood for um, about six months, and what people, a lot of people don't know is that you spend a lot of money right away. You know, you have to get headshots, uh, the apartment, you know, you're paying rent and all kind, and money is just flying out the window. And I was down to six bucks. And I had called my brother after I had just bought uh, a loaf of bread and uh, a jar of peanut butter, and that's what I ate that whole week. And I, when I called him, uh, he said, don't worry, you're gonna be fine, just keep going. It would have to be a conversation that I actually had with Morgan on set. Um, where I was talking about, uh, so he was like, you know, did, did things really explode for you after the first film? And I said, you know, no, I went through a considerable dry spell. And he was like, you know, I did too. And he said, I went through about two years where I didn't work. And he was like, just have faith, you know, and just, just keep going. It's not about how much you work right away. It's just how long you stay in the game. And so I was like, okay. Yes, Morgan Freeman. I yeah, think I will do what you say. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, get, get thyself to recovery, okay. <laughs> you know, and, and having both the gift of desperation and the courage and the willingness to follow that suggestion has led to, um, a series of incredibly wise suggestions that, you know, through a little bit of willingness on my part and by the grace of God, I've been able to apply Very in my good. life. Very cool. G.K. Chesterton, do you know who that is? No. He's this amazing <laughs> writer. Oh, and he, he talked, he said this quote about how much larger our lives would be if ourselves could become smaller in them, and how you could break out of this little theater in which your own plot's on loop, you know, and you could break the ceiling and find yourself under a freer sky, and oh man. That quote, it's really long. I haven't memorized, but you know, I wouldn't want to. It's amazing. It's very interesting, I'll have to look it up. Yeah. And what about you? Uh, it, I, uh, received this amazing piece of advice from my mom when I first got into the acting business. Since day one, she's been telling me that you need to treat everyone with the same amount of res respect as you would treat like a director or executive producer or something. And, and I do, I do that. And I, I try to keep that, that with me with not only my acting career, but also with just life, with people who I'm surrounded with. My dad used to tell me to be nice to people and be on time. And, and I think as simple as that sounds, if you show up when you're supposed to show up and you treat people with respect, you, you're gonna be all right. That's really good advice. Yeah. Uh, I was probably given a lot of advice that was best that I didn't really grasp. 
but what I remember and did grasp was don't look for trouble. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Have you been following that? Doing my best. Good.